Contemporary readers of de Sade's novels often express an aesthetic discomfort or even dismissal. Depending on the novel, some admit to arousal. For many, supplemented by feelings of disgust or dirtiness. These readerly responses come from two sources. The first arises from the reader's projection of narrative expectations. Complaints of the text's flatness and its repeated implausibility are predicated on characters having psychological depth and novels exhibiting realism. But why expect Sad not to be a man of his times? His novels are contemporary with English Gothic fiction of the second half of the 18th century, but purged of supernaturalism because Sad is a materialist and, more importantly, his texts are void of the yet to come. The psychologism of Stendhal has not established the prerequisite of character construction as emotional resonator, and the narratological trappings of the realist novel inaugurated by Balzac won't appear until 50 years after Justine. So if we curb contemporary readerly expectations that derive pleasure from being a narcissistic avatar, reliving the trajectory of some hero's quest, that leaves the second reader affect dimension. We often approach Sad's novels expecting some form of pornography, perhaps gussied up enough to be called erotic fiction, one of the minor genres of canon. All right then, arousal may be an expectation of reader affect, but disgust or dirtiness, that's less anticipated. Yet this is precisely the result of Sad's writerly competence. After all, there are only two subjects in the Sadian apparatus, the master and the accomplice. Victims are devoid of subjectivity. Sad, as a courteous aristocratic liberty, grants the reader the status of subject. The modern reader, structurally denied the pleasure of mirroring some protagonist hero's narrative arc, finds him or herself unexpectedly positioned as accomplice and complicity in what unfolds, leaves the reader tainted. Disgust beckons retreat to comfortable morality, and feeling dirty, well, that's the Divine Marquis' gift, scatology instead of eschatology. I said for sad there are two types of subject, the accomplice and the master. Let us focus then on the master, and in particular, Bataille's concept of sovereignty, and with his encounter with de Sade. Recognizing that de Sade's master rises from the compost of the collapsing Ancien Regime and the French Revolution's paroxysm, we find ourselves at a time before Hegel has even lifted his pen. Indeed, it is ironic that Hegel saw the end of history in the figure of Napoleon, surrounded by his armies, and it was a younger Napoleon, returning from his campaign from Egypt, who ended de Sade's final period of freedom by being the last authoritarian to condemn de Sade to the incarceration in which the Marquis died. Bataille's sovereign emerges not only a century after Hegel, but as a direct response to Kojev's reading of the master-slave dialectic, though that line of flight, I fear, is too long a story for today. The Marquis de Sade's writings are fundamental to Bataille's construct of sovereignty. Yet, like a petulant lover, Bataille only secures sovereignty through a series of acts of unfaithfulness. Bataille constructs a system of equivalences and oppositions, which fundamentally diverges from the system de Sade created through his reign. Bataille contends that human life has two parts. Quote, one part is purposeful, given significance by utilitarian and therefore secondary ends. This part is the one we are aware of. The other is primary and sovereign. It may arise when the other is out of gear. It is obscure or else blindingly clear. Either way, it evades the grasp of our aware intelligence. For Bataille, man distinguishes himself from animality through work, through the exercise of instrumental reason, useful activity ensuring survival. In this, all else is reduced to a thing, whether stone, shovel, or beast of burden. He says, quote, Work endowed us with a clear and distinct consciousness of objects, and science has always gone hand in hand with technology." Unquote. On the other pole is sexual activity in the form of eroticism and excess, and also the sphere of violence, death, and the sacred. 
This construct governs Bataille's reading of Sad. In fact, Bataille's insistence on his own system distorts the Sadian apparatus and leads Bataille to misread the Sad in crucial ways. But you see, the terms defining Bataille's first pole do not map onto Sad's work. Bataille weds work and reason, but Sad is an aristocrat from a line of aristocrats stretching back 600 years. Work is entirely foreign to his very design. And as for banishing reason to the pole of work and seeking ecstasy in its absence, De Sad is a libertine champion of the Enlightenment. Reason is at his very core, and at the core of both his desire and his writing. True, Sad seeks to maximize his pleasure, but at the same time, Having been imprisoned much of his adult life, he valorizes a particular kind of freedom, a liberty that he has been denied by those with power over him, beginning with his mother-in-law, Marie-Madeleine de Piessy, la Présidente du Montreuil. Bataille links sovereignty to solitude. He goes further and claims that the human monsters of Sad's world would have lived in silence. He states, quote, the philosophical speeches are Sad's intrusion reflecting his attitude, not that of his sovereign creations. But this is not the machine that powers Sad's text. The philosophical speeches are integral, not supplementary. The monsters are not imprisoned alone in solitude. The masters are together, a society of the friends of crime who create their own rules through reason. And in those rules, and through their speech, they find liberty, excess, and orgasm. Bataille's peregrinations are but sovereignty in search of a subject, able to bring about its own dissolution so as to achieve its fulfillment, or his idea of its fulfillment. De Sade cannot be that subject, for Bataille is alone in the labyrinth he has constructed, not following Ariadne's thread, but tying himself into a monstrous Gordian knot. In his solitude, Bataille hears only the echo of his acousmatic voice and mistakes his own violence to Sad's text as the achievement of having birth sovereignty. But it came from Sad's darkest hole, suitably an excremental interpretation.